The Dubs have easily been the most dominant team over the past decade. The Warriors front office has a lot of things they do well, but I think one of their best attributes is their ability to find talent in hard to find places. They're able to find talent deep in the draft, and they're also able to find talented players in free agency that every other team seems to overlook. Last offseason, the Warriors signed Gary Payne II, who all three teams could have had, and he became a great role player. The Dubs also picked up Otto Porter Jr. on a minimum contract, and he contributed to the Dubs championship run. Now, because those guys played so well, they increased their own value and the Dubs couldn't keep them, but they found two very good replacements in Dante DiVincenzo and Jermichael Green. And in this video, I'm going to explain why these two guys were free agency steals. But before we continue guys, I'm super close to 10,000 subscribers, so if you enjoy the content, please help me get there by hitting that subscribe button. Now on with the video. First let's discuss the Dante DiVincenzo signing. Back on July 8th, the Dubs signed DiVincenzo to a two-year $9 million deal. Just two seasons ago, DiVincenzo was flourishing as a starter on the Milwaukee Bucks, but after suffering an ankle injury, he regressed. Now the Warriors are banking on DiVincenzo returning to that high level of play. So how good was he? At his best, Dante is a very good 3 and D player that can also handle the ball and pass. On the Bucks, he was one of the better defenders in the league. He's got very active hands and plays the passing lanes well, which allows him to rack up steals and deflections, and he's also an excellent man-to-man -man defender. He's also a terrific rebounder that boxes out and hustles hard to get the board. His 6 rebounds per game average back when he was a starter on the Bucks is very good for a 6'5 guard. And on the offensive end, Dante was a good shooter, knocking down 37% of his threes on 5 attempts per game, and he was also a pretty good cutter. But Dante wasn't just a good off-ball scorer. Because because he also showed the ability to handle the ball and even be a playmaker, but his touches of course were very limited playing next to Giannis and Chris Middleton. Overall, he was a great role player for a Bucks team that would win the championship that season, but unfortunately, he suffered a torn ligament in his ankle against Miami and would miss the rest of the playoffs. He returned to the court next season in December, but he was clearly not the same player as he was working his way back from injury. Dante shot just 33% from the field in 17 games for the Bucks, and at the trade deadline, he was moved to the Kings. On the Kings, DiVincenzo still shot the ball poorly, but he played better as the season went on, averaging 10 points, 4 boards, and 4 assists a game in 25 games for Sacramento. He still shot just 37%, but his shooting did improve and he was playing excellent defense for the Kings. But there was some drama as DiVincenzo felt the Kings were intentionally not starting him to lower his value at the end of the season. The Kings ultimately chose to let him walk, which allowed the Warriors to pick him up. This is the definition of a low-risk, high-reward move for the Dubs. When healthy, DiVincenzo is a great role player and at just 25 years old and another offseason removed from his injury, there's a chance he can return to his old form. He should fit perfectly into the Gary Payne in the second role as a high energy defensive player off the bench. Gary Payne in the second was amazing for the Dubs last year as a great defender and low usage guy on offense that shot the three well and cut to the basket and Dante has a very similar skill set. If Dante provides the value that he's capable of producing, then this signing is going to be a steal for the dubs. The next free agency steal for the Warriors was Jermichael Green. Green is another guy who was a very good role player at one point, but regressed largely due to injury, which gave the dubs the opportunity to buy low. Green has been in the NBA since 2014, but he really started flourishing as a role player on the Grizzlies. In Memphis, he became a good defender and shooter, and he was also a valuable role player on the Clippers and the Nuggets. This offseason, he was traded from the Nuggets to the Thunder and got bought out and the Warriors signed him to a veteran minimum contract. Jermichael Green can be a perfect replacement for Otto Porter Jr. Like Otto, Green is a good outside shooter. Now I know he only shot 26% from 3 last year, but he recently told reporters that he was battling a wrist injury which hurt his shooting ability. For his career, Green has been a good 3 point shooter, and from 2018 to 2021, he shot over 38% from deep each season and he shot 41% from deep for the Clippers as his career high. He's also a good cutter and finisher around the basket, and thanks to his athleticism, he's a serious threat as a lob target. Green is also a good defender that can not only guard the perimeter, but also rotate over and protect the rim. He brings the toughness and dog mentality that the Warriors like, and he's also known as a veteran locker room presence. 
He's going to provide a lot of value as a defender, shooter, and rebounder for the dubs off the bench next season, which is amazing for someone that's just on a veteran minimum contract. Overall, these two signings should help to fill out the dubs second unit. Once again, the Warriors should be one of the deepest teams in the league. Despite losing most of their free agents to other teams, the Warriors front office was savvy enough to find quality players to replace them without having big money to spend. But anyway guys, that's going to be the end of the video. Tell me in the comments if you think Dante DiVincenzo and Jermichael Green were free agency steals. And like the video and hit that subscribe button. With the roster the dubs have, they look set to repeat as champions next year. Click this video to see why the rest of the NBA is terrified of the Golden State Warriors.